Welcome to worship on the seventh Sunday after Epiphany, February 20th, 2022. A few announcements today. Uh, the reopening task force met last week and I have a few things to announce. Uh, first, rummage sales are returning to Prince of Peace. <laughs> With certain guidelines in place, our first rummage sale in over two years will be held this May. Uh, so watch for more information about that. Second, coffee hours are returning after worship. Uh, <laughs> that, no, that's great. That's great. It's always nice when, 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 when we get, when the reopening task force has good news. So how, the coffee hours are going to work like this. Starting in two weeks on March 6th, uh, we will again begin inviting people uh, to stay after Sunday worship, to share fellowship in the fellowship hall. On Easter, we will begin chanting and singing the liturgy again like we did before the pandemic. And as a reminder, um, well, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> while masks are still recommended for all, um, they're only required while singing. Uh, the task force will meet again on March 15th and will continue to discuss um, alterations to worship and other things. If you have suggestions, you are encouraged to speak to a member of the task force. That's Justine Sassari, Denny Horn, Kathy Williams, Marlene Stana, or myself. Lent begins next week on Ash Wednesday, March 2nd. Uh, you're invited to attend worship here at 1 o'clock or 7 o'clock p.m. The 1 o'clock worship will be recorded and posted online that evening. Uh, imposition of ashes will be available at both services. Um, if you'd prefer to take ashes home with you and impose them yourself, um, we will have baggies with a small amount of ashes available beginning next Sunday. And remind me, the ashes are in my office. I need to get them to you today. I know. I was going to ask you. Okay. Uh, I still do need a few helpers for the 7 o'clock Ash Wednesday service. If you're interested in being a greeter, usher, PowerPoint operator, or lay reader at the 7 o'clock service, please let me know. Sherry has an announcement from the Stewardship Committee. Morning. I hope you're all well today. Um, I'd like to talk about the insert that you received in the announcement folder when you came in today. It was prepared last week, but the unexpected amount of snow changed in-person worship. As you know, over the past month, our stewardship campaign, 50 Years from Caterpillar to Butterfly, was shared through pastor's sermons, devotions, a poem, and bulletin boards. Some of you may have received this in print, through regular mail delivery, and some through electronic mail, and some of you may not have received any information at all. We found out that there was a gap in who is receiving pastor's daily emails and who is on the mailing list. We are sorry if you did not receive the written materials. February 6th was the day that commitment cards will be were to be returned to indicate your intentions to financially support the ministries here at Prince of Peace. Some of us may have just forgotten. <laughs> that is why we are supplying a copy of the letter that was sent and a commitment card for your completion. Please complete the card today. Fold it in half and place it in the offering plate in the narthex on your way out. Or if you would like to take more time to read the letter, please bring it back or send it back to the attention of Mary O'Mealy. If you are watching online, or listening by phone, just send a note to Mary and let her know the amount of your commitment. All commitments are confidentially registered by Mary as the financial secretary. In Exodus 25:2, we hear God telling Moses, tell the Israelites to take for me an offering from all whose hearts prompt them to give. You shall receive the offering for me. Thank you for your continued generosity in supporting the ministries here with your talent, your time, and your financial commitments of offering and items you purchased to support others. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry, and thank you for a great, uh, Stuart, was somebody on a clap? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I'm one of the ones who've forgotten. As soon as I'm done with announcements, I'm going to put this back in the basket. So. Um, I will be on vacation from tomorrow through next Sunday. Um, the phone number for emergency pastoral coverage is in your announcement folder. Uh, online worship will still be available um, this weekend next week. 
I also want to tell you about the great program that we're offering for Lent this year, but these announcements have already been going on for too long already, so I'm going to tell you about that during the sermon. So let us worship the Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done 
and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred we may sow love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for story time. Good morning. Small group today. Did you ever hear the story of Joseph? In the Bible? You know, there are two people in the Bible named Joseph. Do you know either of them? Yeah. Yeah? I know that one of them is the, one of the two fathers of... One of them is one of the two fathers of Jesus. Well said. Well, this is story is about the other Joseph. And uh, I think we have a Joseph in the room right now. So we're going we're gonna to make use of your grandfather Joseph here. Um... To, uh, to act out the part of this Joseph. Now, this Joseph had 11 brothers. Can you imagine having 11 brothers? That's a lot. And you know what those 11 brothers thought of him? Not much. Everybody's a... <laughs> so you know what they did? 
They beat him up. Let's pretend we're beating up your grandfather. Beat him up. They threw him in a pit. And they sold him into slavery. Then they went home and told their father that Joseph had died. What do you think of these brothers? Not very nice? What do you think? Yeah? Yeah. Well, if Joseph ever sees them again, what do you think he's going to do? I think he's going to... He like don't do mean things. He's gonna tell them stop doing mean things. So that's that would be nice if that's all he did. Well, here's what happened. Joseph ended up in Egypt as a slave to a guy named Potiphar, but he was a very good slave. You're a good slave. And to make a long story short, eventually he ended up working for the Pharaoh, who was the king of Egypt. He was second in command of all the country. Wow, so everybody bowed down to Joseph. Yeah, you like that. <laughs> well, a famine came over the whole land, and there was no rain for seven years, and all the crops dried up. But Joseph had been very smart, and he had stored food for seven years before that, so that all of Egypt had plenty. But you know what? Joseph's brothers didn't live in Egypt. And they were getting very hungry and desperate. And they heard there was food there, so they went down to Egypt to buy food from the Pharaoh. They went to the palace, and guess who they saw there? Joseph. They saw Joseph, but guess what? They didn't recognize him, because he was all dressed like, a, like an Egyptian. So what do you think he did? What do you think Joseph did when he saw his brothers come there and ask him for food? What do you think? What do you think he did, Joseph? <laughs> I know what I'd like to do to him, uh, but I didn't. Joseph forgave them. He said, I am your brother Joseph. Is our father still alive? And they were shocked. And they told him, yes, yes he is. And Joseph told them, don't worry about what you did. God used your acts to bring me here so that I might save you in this way. And Joseph gave his brothers all the food that they needed, and he also sent them home to bring their father back with them. And he gave them a good place to live in Egypt, and they all lived happily ever after. Were you surprised by what Joseph did? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Were you surprised? Mm -hmm. Do you think you could have done that? I don't know if I could have done that. He showed some great forgiveness. All right. Well, thank you for your help. Thank you for, your, for humoring me, Dad. Um, <laughs> And let's, let's bow our heads for a prayer. Dear God, thank you for Joseph. Thank you for forgiveness. Help us to always forgive everyone we, let, we know. Amen. Okay, get back to your seats. Do we have a lay reader today? Okay. A reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. God has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler of o over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children. 
as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And Joseph kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Psalm 37. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous by those who do wrong. They shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find a safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, who shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light and the justice of your case like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Leave rage alone. Do not be provoked. It leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. Even if you search out their place, they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land, and they will delight in the abundance of peace. For the deliverance of the righteous comes from you, O Lord. You are their stronghold in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them, rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them because you seek refuge. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. In the Apostles' Creed, we speak of the resurrection of the body and the life of everlasting. Using the metaphor of a planted seed in the story of Adam, Paul reaches passionately about the mystery of the following Christ's perfect life into eternity. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come in life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that it is to be, and bear seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body according to the God's own choosing, and to each kind a seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead, what is sown is perishable, what is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in physical body, and it is raised in spiritual body. If there is a physical body, then there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first Adam became a living, be living being, and the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first human was from the dust of the earth, the second human is from heaven. As was the one made from dust, so are those who are dust. And as is the one in heaven, so are those who are in heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the one in dust, we will also bear the image of the one of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the dominion of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Thank you, O Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. 
If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, who is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> there is a third way. There is always a third way. I believe that. Now, I don't always succeed in acting on that, and I don't even always remember that I believe that. But in those times when I do, when I look for the third way, and even take the third way, in those times I am amazed at what God provides. What do I mean by a third way? Well, I mean a third way to respond to stress. Stress is a powerful thing. Have any of you ever experienced stress? <laughs> of course you have. Well, brain scientists tell us that when we experience stress, our heart rate speeds up, our pupils dilate, adrenaline and cortisol are released, and lots of other things happen that prepare us to do one of two things, to act in one of two ways, to fight or to flee. It's been called the fight-or-flight response. Now, it's more complicated than that, of course, but that's good enough for the purpose of this sermon. Now, this response was very, very useful to our distant ancestors. Thanks to this response, they were able to survive attacks from saber-toothed tigers and bears. But the trouble is, a lot of the stressors that we face today don't come from wild animals. Yet our physical response is the same. Our brains are still wired to do this, even if the stress we experience today is caused by a deadline at work, or an insensitive driver, or a family argument, or a political post on Facebook. We still have that fight-or-flight response. For instance, some fight responses are the feeling of road rage, or making nasty comments on a Facebook post, or saying, well, if a bully hits you, hit back harder. And some flight responses are things like numbing ourselves with substance abuse or with too much television. Or saying, I don't want to say anything at all because I don't want to make waves. In the stressful situations we find ourselves in today, neither fight nor flight are really helpful responses. But the good news is that there is actually a third way. A third way that Jesus talks about in today's gospel. Jesus says, love your enemies. Love your enemies. That's the third way. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Turn the other cheek. Give to everyone who begs from you. And Jesus says that this third way is not just possible, but in fact, it's our job to do it. Jesus tells us, you are my disciples, and I call you to a higher standard. After all, do you think you deserve credit for loving people who love you? For doing good to those who do good to you? For giving to people who will repay you? That's nothing special. That's just good business. But if you want to follow me, 
Take the third way. Let me tell you an example of the third way. I've shared this example before, but it's a good one and worth repeating. It's in Matthew's version of this passage. In Matthew, Jesus says, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other as well. And that detail is actually crucial. As in the days of the Roman Empire, the left hand was considered unclean. The left hand was, well, used for toilet functions and not for much else. You used your right hand for everything else, including if you were going to slap someone. So if I'm going to slap someone on the right cheek, remember that their right cheek is on my left. So I'd have to do it like this, backhanded. And a backhanded slap in those days, much like today, is not intended to harm, but to humiliate. Romans would backhand slaves and Jews and children and others they thought were beneath them. If they wanted to hit, you, if they wanted to hit an equal, well then they'd hit you on the right cheek. Or excuse me, on the left cheek. So Jesus said, if someone backhand slaps you, offer the other cheek. Don't fight back. Don't run away. But stand there and say, if you want to hit me, hit me as an equal. It's actually a way of showing love. A way of showing that you view that person as worthy of respect and that you demand respect as well. This is the third way, not fight, not flight, but a creative way of standing up in the face of stress. In the 20th century, several people who changed the world did so precisely using this third way. People like Mohandas Gandhi, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, Nelson Mandela, each of them was caught up in a system that seemed to give them no way out, a system that needed to be changed, and they changed that system. They changed the world by using the third way. Not fight, not flight, but something different. Love. Now we are not all called to change the world the way these saints did. But we are all called to live this out in our own lives. Love your enemies, Jesus said. But how can I love someone who hates me? How can I forgive someone who has done something terrible? And what's more, why? Why would I ever do something like that? Well, the why is the easier part. Why? Because we're God's people, and Jesus calls us to a higher standard, a standard that can almost seem impossible. Why? Also because it's exactly what Christ has done for us. Jesus is the third way. Jesus is God's third way. God made us, and we sinned. We rebelled against God, and if God had acted on a fight response, we would have been wiped out years ago. And if God had acted on a flight response, well, God would have abandoned us and maybe started again on a different planet. But God found a third way to come to earth as a human being, to become one of us, to die for us, and to be raised from the dead for us. God didn't destroy us. God didn't abandon us. God redeemed us through Christ, who is the third way. And because Christ has done this for us, we are called to do this for others. Well, that's why. But what about how? Well, Scripture tells us that the Spirit of Christ lives within us. And because Christ lives in us, we have the power to do this. We have the power to rise above our nature of fight versus flight, Jesus was truly human. In fact, he was perhaps the most truly human person there's ever been. And so he shows us what we can be. With his spirit in us, we can live out our calling to rise above our destructive tendencies, our base desires for revenge and for peace and quiet. We can rise above and do the work he's called us to do, the work of sharing love with everyone, even our enemies. The work of truly being who we are. Not just being nice or kind, but being alive. Being alive and trusting that that life comes not from ourselves, but from God. Truly being alive and sharing that life with everyone around us. Even those who hate us. It's not easy, but it's possible. And it's what Jesus wants for us. And it's what it means to truly live the life we've been given. I believe there's a third way in every stressful situation we face, even the mundane ones. 
There's a third way to get through any stress related to COVID. We don't need to fight one another and we don't need to just hide ourselves away. There's a third way to live. There's a third way to get through any stress related to our families. We don't need to fight and we don't need to just give in to get along. There is a third way to live. There's a third way to get through any stress related to our finances. We don't need to resort to violence or theft and we don't need to give up and die in poverty. There is a third way to live. Now, I don't know what that third way is a lot of the time, but I'm convinced that it always has something to do with love, and I'm convinced that it has something to do with putting our trust in God and not in our own wisdom, and I'm convinced that it has something to do with working with each other and that it's something that takes practice. With God, with each other, with love, and with practice, we can learn to turn from the automatic flight or flight response and learn to live the third way, the way of life, the way of love. And that's exactly what I'm offering to practice with you throughout Lent this year. Our Lenten program that starts in two weeks is called The Way of Love, and it's a chance for us all to explore seven aspects of this third way that Jesus calls us to. Seven practices that will build our strength and our endurance and our faith to find and act on the third way in our lives and train us to be the people God wants us to be. So pick up one of these booklets in the narthex today and start reading it on March 6th, the first Sunday of Lent. And if you're watching from home, you can download this in the email I sent a few days ago. And watch the videos that I record for this program, the first of which will be available on March 6th the first Sunday in Lent. Together we will learn and practice these seven things. Turn, pray, learn, bless, rest, worship, and go. Together we will learn more fully how to be truly human, how to be truly alive. Together we will learn the third way of God. There is a third way, the way of love. The way of true and abundant life, the life God wants for us, the life God gives us. Let's live that life together. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Our Father, our Lord, through your word and through your Son, you have taught us to love not only our neighbors, but to show it and care for those who may be called your enemies. Encourage us at Prince of Peace, your churches worldwide, and Trinity and Banger with their pastor Larry Lane to follow the lead of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy and forgiveness, just as we have received it from you. Be with Trinity as Pastor Lane prepares for his retirement. We also thank you for the successful stewardship campaign, and we ask you to bless our upcoming planned anniversary events. God in your grace. We humbly offer our prayers. Our Father, our Lord, please nourish fields that lay dormant now, resting, awaiting the warmth and sunshine of spring, waiting to bloom and to forth brilliant flowers and sustain fruits and vegetables when the time is right. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give us favorable weather for planting. Bless the buried seeds to grow and flourish into an abundant harvest to be shared by all. Guard against famine and disease. God of grace. We humbly offer our prayer. Our Father, our Lord, look upon your world with mercy. We pray that you may delight someday in the abundance peace together as one, your loving children. Protect all who have lived who are marred by war and civil unrest, especially innocent children. We ask that you release political prisoners and amplify the voice that challenges us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. We await the day swords will be turned into plowshares. God of grace. We humbly offer our prayer. Our Father, our Lord, your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that are long that long for forgiveness, mend broken relationships, heal bodies suffering with chronic pain or illness, comfort and strengthen the broken hearts and minds. We include these in our prayers. Morgan, Charlie, Donald, Bill, David, Jackson, Maureen, Dale, Dave, Diane, Elwood, and the family and friends of Nancy, Robbie, Mark, Carol, Bobby, Bobby. Shirley, Shirley. Ha. We humbly offer our prayers. Oh, grace for God of grace. We humbly offer our prayers. Our Father, our Lord, you bind us together into one family in Christ. Teach us to forgive one another, to resolve conflict, to have patience with all. Bless families in all kinds and sizes. Show love to all and comfort those who have lost loved ones and those who might be lonely or grieving. Let us learn to welcome all types into your house, our church. God of grace. We humbly offer our prayer. 
Our Father, our Lord, another week that you have given us has passed. Let us praise and thank you for the life that you have given us. Let us rejoice for each moment, each breath, all that you give us. We ask that you bless those with birthdays this week. Kathleen Ott, June Jones, Jill Hill, Doris Thomas, and Michelle Harrison. Let their day be filled with sunshine, joy, and lots of love. God of grace. Our Father, our Lord, we ask you to be with those participating overseas in the Olympics. Keep them safe and well as they compete with the gifts that you have given them. Let all who attend enjoy the company of each other in peace and good sportsmanship. God of grace. Our Father, our Lord, we praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom from the Babel to modern times. We ask you have raised them in personable and eternal life. Sustain us by faith and by the promise of the resurrection. God of grace. We humbly offer our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with the heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to the hungry world. In your name, Christ our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word you created all things. Through the prophets you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us and this meal that refreshed with this heavenly food we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. 
Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you, and enough for all. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. May God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news.